Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter of HurricaneTrack.com here. Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Time back in the office in Wilmington, North Carolina after a few days again down along the Gulf Coast for Nicholas and of course picking up the camera systems there in the wake of Hurricane Ida. If you haven't seen that video yet, check it out. It's on Twitter and on YouTube. Uh, about a minute and some change. I'll put a longer version of it out eventually. I'm working on it. There's a, about 18 hours of video there from that GoPro camera all contained on these little micro SD cards. What an amazing thing. Wow, uh, technology has come a long way. All right, so let's talk about what's going on in the tropics. It's uh, mid-September, peak time of the hurricane season, and true to form, we've got a few areas out there to keep an eye on. Remnants of Nicholas hanging out down in south central Louisiana. It's just an area of spin and low-level energy at this point. A few rain showers, that's about it. And then we have 96L perched off of my coast here in southeast North Carolina. Uh, pretty good chance that this will go on to develop over time. This will probably develop at some point, but it's not looking quite as, I guess, threatening. Maybe. You never know. I mean, it's still sitting way out here in the open Atlantic, and there's a lot of distance between here and here, or here, right? and distance is also equivalent to time. You know, it has to take time to travel that distance, and a lot can change, is my point. And then we have another system trying to come off of Africa there that has a low probability of development. Typically, this area of the main development region is going to start to shut down and not be as productive. It really hasn't been that busy this year. We had Elsa earlier in the western part of the main development region. That seems like forever ago. I don't even remember when Elsa was. I mean, I went down to Florida for it and set up and everything, but boy, I tell you what. Uh, anyway, we had Elsa down there in the MDR, and then we had Larry come out of the main development region. But everything else that has impacted the United States started much farther to the west. And I think that's going to be the story going forward, especially as we get into October. And I'll show you that at the end here with a tweet from... Joe Bastardi, haven't showed anything from him in a long time, but something popped up and I was like, all right, we're going to show that. And I'll tease that for you and show you at the end here. All right, so the satellite animation for this afternoon, you can see lots of activity out there, but nothing too threatening. I mean, there's the low-level spin left over of Nicholas there over Louisiana. And the reason that it's not doing uh, what Harvey did, you know, Harvey was very slow-moving, here over Texas, just kind of meandered around and then eventually moved on out. And Harvey produced almost five feet of rain, and in some cases it was pretty much five feet of rain. Five feet! That's true, it really did. So why didn't Nicholas do that? Not that anybody was hoping that it would. Well, there's more dry air, more subsidence, more sinking air. There's no mechanism to really kickstart this, so it's just low-level energy, and that's a good thing. Uh, there's also strong upper-level winds going over the top of it. So there's just not a lot of convective processes going on uh, with the remnants of Nicholas. So it's just going to be a few scattered bands of rain. Uh, you can see those on radar pretty easily down there, but nothing real heavy. So that's good. There's 96L off the coast of the Carolinas. Kind of a large system, somewhat discombobulated. Although it looks like it's trying to develop some deeper convection right there in the last few frames. 95L hanging around somewhere in here. Then we have another system coming off of Africa. So, you know, the tropics are busy. Nothing, as I said, too threatening right now. So that's good. We need a break, that's for sure. So looking at the vorticity patterns, there's Nicholas down here and just limited overall energy associated with it. Much larger area of energy associated with 96L. And uh, this is much broader. And it's going to take a lot more to bundle up and eventually this should develop as it goes on out off the coast of North America. Probably become a subtropical storm using up uh, another name off the list. Maybe briefly a tropical storm. And I know it's like, you know, what's the difference? Well, it does matter because tropical storms are more focused. The lower pressure, the heat is concentrated near the center. The wind field is tighter. You get more of a banded look to it. And everything's just more concentrated with a tropical cyclone, a pure tropical cyclone. And these subtropical systems, they're kind of like hybrids. They're a mix of these large ocean storms that we get in the mid-latitudes and a little bit of ingredients sprinkled in 
uh, from tropical systems. They're much more broad, kind of spread out, larger wind field, the energy distributed over a larger area, and so they're not quite the same structurally as a tropical storm or a tropical cyclone would be. And I think that's eventually what will happen here with 96L. It'll be classified more as subtropical, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Still going to have some impacts, especially for ocean-going vessels uh, throughout this area. We'll show you on the GFS in a minute. Uh, and it'll send some ocean swells back towards the land areas, and that could cause rip currents and all of the nastiness that can accompany that. Down here is the energy associated with 95L and more energy coming off of Africa. But we're kind of in a down period right now. The Madden-Julian Oscillation not necessarily favorable in the Atlantic Basin. Lots of sinking air, converging air in the upper levels. Not a lot of rising motion on a broad scale. So we don't have a lot of activity that looks like it's going to blossom anytime soon. And we kind of went through this around the same time last year. We had Beta out there. We had Sally before that over in the Gulf. You remember quite well, I'm sure. And then we took a little bit of a break, and once we got into October last year, well, we all remember how that turned out. So might do the same kind of thing this year. So let's take a look at what the GFS shows, first of all. And I'm going to compare this 5,000-foot level right here, 850 millibars. That's 5,000 feet up in the atmosphere, roughly. 12Z today from the GFS operational. We're going to, co going to compare the 5,000-foot level with the eh, roughly 40,000 foot level, 200 millibars, way up there where the jets fly, the commercial airliners. Because I'm going to show you a little bit of comparing and contrasting uh, sort of near the surface, 5,000 feet versus way up high, and what may be happening here with our system 95L. Remember the models were really aggressive with this developing and coming on west, becoming a hurricane somewhere in the southwest Atlantic especially the last couple of days, there was a couple of runs there of the GFS that got people kind of talking about it, and rightfully so. The operational model goes way on out to 16 days, and people have free access to it here, thanks to many different websites that are out there. And as a side note, I think that's a good thing on one hand, because people are curious, and it keeps them aware. They see something, and they may say, oh, look at that, at day 10, 11, 12, whatever, maybe day 14, it looks like it comes up to my area. Maybe I'm going to watch a little closer. Uh, they might not understand what they're looking at, but, you know, so what? You know, you're going to lock all this down and hide it away from people? Um, I think as long as they understand that it's far out in time and don't go posting it that, hey, Uncle Fred, you're going to have a hurricane in two weeks in Manhattan or Miami or whatever, that's a no-no. You know, don't, don't go doing that. But if you look at it and you say, ooh, there's the possibility here, Hey, at least it gets people involved, they're engaged, and they're watching. And that's a good thing. It really is. So there's the energy with 95. There's the energy with 96. There's the energy of Nicholas. And there's some other energy off of Africa or coming off Africa. So let's put these into motion here over the next few days. And you see what happens. They all leave my drawn-in circles, these pieces of energy. And so let's just look. This is 48 hours out. I'll take the telestration away. And let's see what we got. Well, this becomes more concentrated, yes, but it's not quite as focused. These height lines in here are much farther apart, and so that shows me that the energy is not quite as concentrated. Nevertheless, I think within two days there, 48 hours, this could be Odette, more than likely. That would be the next name on the list, so this, I think, will get it. And then down here, 95L, smaller, smaller envelope of energy, south of this big area of high pressure and there's another envelope of energy coming off there and yes the remnants of Nicholas still hanging around down in Louisiana it's like go away already so this is what it looks like at 48 hours at 5,000 feet so let's look at the upper levels also at 48 hours let's compare all right so there are our systems 5,000 versus 40,000 feet or 850 versus 200 millibars and there's the deal there. Somebody's running the weed eater outside the office here. <laughs> um, it's all, well, it's not always something. These usually go pretty flawless, uh, but it is annoying. Nevertheless, this system is on the west side of a very stout area of high pressure. If uh, in the upper levels, big bubble of upper level uh, anticyclonic flow, uh, anticyclone as we call it, big high pressure aloft. 
If it was sitting over here or under it like there, this would be off to the races. But it's on the edge of that upper level anticyclone or ULAC as people call it. So there will be some shear coming in from the south perhaps. And then you got another anticyclone developing here. That 96 cell is on the northwest side. And in between this little tut feature, this tropical upper tropospheric trough the way that the atmosphere moves along, these waves of energy, they break, just like you see in the ocean. And with any kind of a fluid, you get breaking energy, breaking waves, and it creates interesting things. And as we go along, that's 72 hours there. Uh, let's take it out to 96, and we'll compare that to this one at 96 hours. So there's 96 hours. And first of all, this is pretty well developed up here south of Newfoundland. Uh, subtropical, tropical, whatever, I think it does get named. And this doesn't look uh, too weak, I guess you could say. It's it's getting there. Could be a depression or maybe even a name storm, if so. And this becomes Odette. This would be Peter. And it's northeast of the, uh, of the islands there, northeast by a pretty good margin. So, you know, it's not too big of a problem. But why isn't it stronger? Well, again, you got this now upper level almost a closed low sitting in there probably and this shading here you're looking at upper level winds 20 30 knots coming out of the south shearing it so it's not in the best of environments but i caution you this is four days out and we've seen how bad the modeling can be these last couple of years for whatever reason i just don't understand that's a whole other thing I, you know gather a panel of experts and start talking about it i guess but I, you know, the upper level winds could be stronger, and this is not even a thing. It's like an open wave still. You know, the pressure there showing up at about 1,006. This is upper level winds and the mean sea level pressure. Different layers all showed up at once there on the map. Uh, or that high pressure could be a little bit larger, and that little tut feature and the cutoff low there in the upper levels of the atmosphere might not even be there. You know, this is four days out. A lot can change. So... We'll see. It's not too much of a threat to the islands, but something to watch for sure. Let's move this on out to day five, 120 hours, still northeast of Puerto Rico. And a couple of interesting things happens because of what would be Odette up here and the large influence it has. It erodes the ridge through here, leaving a weakness. So if this does develop, this will go on up and out more than likely. So in one way, we can thank Odette to be, I'm naming it early, but you get the idea, for keeping probably, you know, who knows, right, 95L away from being able to threaten the United States. But this is five days out. Lots can change, as we have seen a lot of times these last two years, especially 20 and 21, these two hurricane seasons. Five days is a long time. So uh, we'll see what happens with this. This is day five. And no reason to even worry about beyond that time, because why, right? You know, so much can change, so many puzzle pieces. Eric Webb's on it, though. He was talking about it earlier, that <clears throat> he wasn't really thrilled at seeing on the sep uh, September 13th, this is three days ago, that the overall pattern was developing this big blocking area of high pressure, and anything that was south down here could get trapped and threatened to come up the coast. And it looks like it's changed a little bit here. And he's saying that in this tweet today, that he's glad to see this trend completely being reversed going back over the last few days to a more progressive pattern. And uh, it's much sooner with 96L hanging around as an extra tropical cyclone south of that ridge there. And if this holds uh, true, I don't know why the animation stopped. Let me refresh the page, see if it'll kick in again. There we go. Um, that that might uh, make an escape route for uh, 95 sitting in here that it won't be as much of a threat overall. We'll see. You know, like I said, things can change, but looking a little better overall with no threats because, as he says here, we could all use a break. That is for darn sure, especially when we look at what Joe was saying. Now, I have followed Joe for a long time, since the late 90s, and he has taught a lot of people, a lot of things about pattern recognition. And I wanted to show this because this was very interesting. At the long range pattern, you can see these things. Ben Knoll talks about that a lot. We tweet the maps from Ben. 
that you can see these larger pieces, the much bigger atmospheric pieces, those are easier to resolve. And then you can take those forecasts that go out two weeks to 30 days and compare those like fingerprints to something in the past. So you have a fingerprint currently in forensics, right? And you try to compare it to a database. Is there a match? Oh yes, there is a match. This fingerprint belongs to whoever and we need to call that person in and question them. So that's the analogy here. That's what I'm going with. This is the fingerprint, the 30 day uh, JMA upper level pattern, roughly 500 millibars anyway, mid-level. Uh, and that's ridging, you know, anomalous ridging. There's Florida down there. This is just a, a, a pole. I can't remember exactly what the projection, you know, being a degree holder in geography, I don't know everything. But this is looking down from the pole. All right, so the North Pole is up here, and then everything is spread out from there. You're looking at the globe from the top down. You understand? So there's North America right there, and I do know that. And <laughs> Central America over here. You understand? And so there's the ridging, anomalous ridging, and uh, it's showing about a 30 to 60 meter height anomaly, meaning that it's thicker. You know what I mean? It's like stronger ridging, anomalous. 500 millibar ridging over the next 30 days going into October, about mid-October or so. And then that, you go look and say, okay, that's the forecast. Well, what did big hit seasons look like? And because of archives, you can go back and you can select, you know, all right, uh, 1950 was a big year, 54 is a big year, 85 and 05 were big years. What was the 500 millibar pattern during those years? Lo and behold, this is a, a slightly different projection, um, just the way it's oriented, North America right here, of course. But that's the deal. You go in and you can look and you say, okay, over those years, which had big hits in October, that's the pattern. 500 millibar anomalies north in Canada and anomalous uh, height uh, showing up on the negative side because of all the, the hits that were down there, the low pressure in the Caribbean that's what you get. So that's the match there, so to speak, that the database pulls up. This is the forecast. This is matching it against stuff in the past. And then he goes on to talk about December, which I am in no mood to discuss. And we'll get to winter. We'll get to December when we get there. But that's an interesting way to look at things. You understand? So he talks about after September 25th here, uh, and we had big hit years after the 25th, those particular, and you could go in and you can say, well, what about years where you didn't have a lot of hits? The pattern's different. So that's a really neat thing to do, and different people do that, and they can go in and try to match things up. And uh, Joe's one of the best at doing that uh, over the years. So there you go. We'll be watching that. A little bit of a quiet time, and at least for land threats right now, maybe changing as we get into October, which fits perfectly, whether we like it or not with what we have seen over the last five or six years. Octobers have become busier as of late, going all the way back really to 2014 with Gonzalo, major hurricane 2015. There was Joaquin, and then 16 we had Matthew, and 17 yeah, we had Nate, which wasn't too bad after a very big year with Irma, Maria, Jose, and all that, uh, and Harvey, of course. And the 2018 was Cat 5 Michael in October. 2019, another... Yeah, we didn't have too much to worry about in October, but boy, last year, whew, I mean, we all remember that. So we shall see what 2021 holds as we go forward. All right, so just a friendly reminder, Twitter, at Hurricane Track. CJ does a lot of our Facebook stuff. Thank you, CJ. And then YouTube, you're watching on YouTube, so become a subscriber, will you? You know, put the notification button on, like the video, share the video. Let's grow this really big. The more, the more we grow this, the more we can do. I'm really proud of where it's come. Every time I look at the stats, whether it's social media traditionally or the Patreon, how well it's grown, this is why we're able to do what we do, thanks to you guys on your side of the screen. Used guys over there, all of you. Yes, it's because of you that I am here. So thank you very much. That's how you follow and support what we are doing. All right, well, that'll about do it for me. Have a great rest of your Thursday. It is Thursday. Yep, it is. Uh, thanks for tuning in. It's good to be back. I'll have more for you tomorrow. I'm Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com. We'll talk about it some more tomorrow afternoon.